But this semester's project I'm super excited about because um, we collectively, the 19 of us in the room, uh, are going to write a book together. And it's a book that at the end of the semester I'm hoping that we can publish, make available for the world to read. Um, the purpose of our book, I call it a social study guide, um, the purpose is to help other students like yourselves um, to learn and understand real analysis in the way that you as students are learning and understanding it in the way that makes the most sense to you. Not every math textbook in the world, let's face it, is written to be read. <laughs> Not every math textbook in the world is even written to be read by students who are learning something for the first time. Um, I've, for this semester, tried to find a textbook that is the most accessible, the most readable that I could find and was also free uh, to download online, which is great. Um, and I'm, I'm really coming to believe that using free, no-cost, open resources for, for educational purposes is really a good thing to do. Textbooks are expensive. Um, and there is an increasing amount of really good, quality, open resources that are out there um, in, in the world, especially on something like math, where the subject material at the undergraduate level, at least, doesn't change that much from year to year. Um, and so there's a lot of really good quality resources out there. Um, for upper level classes like ours, there's not quite as much to choose from as there is from like calculus or algebra or some of these topics that you know, most every college student has to take at some point or another. Um, and so what I'd like to do is to help improve that, right? to create a resource together that is both maximally useful to help us understand analysis in our own words, um, but also something that we can share and it can become a part of this um, this open resource sharing community out on the internet. Um, so here's how I envision that working. Uh, my role in this project is I'm going to be your editor, basically, for, for the book. You all each are going to be authors. Um, and each of the learning standards in our course, uh-oh, each of you will get an invitation to create an author account uh, in our book on Pressbooks, and this is what our book looks like right now. Um, there's not a whole lot here just yet. Um, but what there is in the table of contents is one section in this book for each of our learning standards. I haven't yet decided whether I want to include the proofs and logic portion as something that I assign to all of you. Um, I might do that as something separate. Uh, so we're going to focus mostly on the topics that relate to goals one through four in the course. Uh, so for example, um, learning standard 1.A, the rational numbers within the reals, that's one chapter of this book right now. Um, that doesn't yet have an author associated with it, but that author could be you uh, by the end of the day today. Uh, so each of you is going to take on one of these learning standards. A couple of these standards I've put two people on rather than one because I think they're going to be a little bit more chunky uh, to work on. Um, but it will be two people within your same group uh, working on that. So it will be somebody that you already have some experience working with. Um, and so this is something that over the course of the semester, there will be steps along the way that we'll do. Um, the first step that I'm going to be asking you to do for Wednesday after we're done assigning topics today, um, is to go find some sources. So this is not, your chapter is not something that you have to write all on your own. I'm interested in you first finding some resources out there on the web that you can compile into your chapter to get you a head start. Um, and we'll talk a little bit in the next couple of weeks about copyrights and licenses and that kind of stuff because what ultimately we want you to use is we want you to use material that's not already copyrighted by some other author, right? That carries a license that allows you to take it and reuse it and to transform it into something else. Uh, so we're going to talk in the next couple of weeks about what that looks like. But just for our first step, find any two sources of information on your standard out on the internet. Um, and I'm going to have you post links to those sources in your chapter on Pressbooks. Um, so by next Wednesday, each of the chapters in our book should just have a couple of links in them and some brief explanation about what you'll find at those links for each of the topics uh, in, the, in the course. Um, and also, to find, and you don't have to solve them, you don't have to reproduce them in the book just yet, but find and cite four exercises that relate to this learning standard. Um, and the parameters for that is that these exercises can't be exercises that appear in one of our homework packets. Uh, or quizzes. So they need to be exercises that you, we otherwise wouldn't solve together as a class, uh, but which relate to that learning standard. So you can find them in other places in our textbook. So some of our homework exercises come from the textbook. Um, some of them don't, but a lot of them do. Um, I'm also going to post a, an, an alternative version of a, a different textbook that's also open and free um, through Blackboard. So feel free to look through that as well. Um, really anywhere else that you can find um, exercises. And all I'm asking for for now is just a citation. So how can other people find this exercise? Um, you will ultimately have to typeset that exercise in your chapter and then also typeset a solution in your chapter. Um, but just for next Wednesday, 
find those two sources and post links and brief explanation. Find those four exercises and post citations to them. And that'll, be, that'll get us started on the path.